My name is Alex Berman, and you're watching Selling Breakdowns. Ray Kroc is the founder of the McDonald's restaurant empire and the subject of the film The Founder. In this video, we'll run through the story of the film, compare some scenes to real life, and demonstrate that many of Ray Kroc's actions were fueled by a psychological disorder called maladaptive daydreaming. The main symptom of this disorder is the ability to live an extremely rich dream life that to the dreamer can seem even more real than reality. That disconnect is what fueled Ray Kroc to succeed in business and drive many of the strange decisions he made in the film. Kroc seemed prone to fantasy from an early age, first dropping out of high school to form a band, then soon after faking his age to enlist in the World War I effort. This same tendency towards fantasy may have even led him to marry his high school sweetheart, Ethel Fleming, against his family's wishes, launching him into his lifelong sales career. Kroc spent much of his time on the road during his adult life, and Ethel was busy raising their only child, daughter Marilyn. This is where we find Ray in The Founder. Entrepreneur Magazine's Chris Wright said, It's death of a salesman, a feeling that seeps out in the first few minutes, but as Wright points out, it has a very different ending. One of the first scenes in the film has Ray drinking in his motel room and listening to motivational tapes. This fantasy of success is what kept him going through the initial 40 years of failure before finding the McDonald's brothers. But as soon as he gets a call from the McDonald's brothers asking to order a half dozen milkshake machines, Ray sees opportunity and heads to California. Watching as Ray gets completely swept into the brothers' story makes you wonder, did his bias towards fantasy help him become a great salesman? After the initial conversation with the brothers, he returns to Ethel with a fully formed plan, talking about how he found the next Henry Ford, how the idea is revolutionary, and how he's about to make history. But Ethel's response is strange. She isn't excited for him. It's clear that Ray's come to Ethel dozens of times before equally as excited, his maladaptive daydreaming having led him down a path of delusion. A near delusional fixation on a goal is common with disassociative personalities, and Ray's fixation leads him to pitch the McDonald's brothers multiple times, showing up at their restaurant daily until they give him the rights to franchise. We start to see the cracks around the edges of Keaton's crack when his building plan hasn't been approved by Dick. The McDonald's brothers' ongoing refusal to change building codes from their California blueprint is, in reality, the reason that the real crack gave for ousting the brothers in the first place. And Ray's anger stems from his daydream not being realized immediately, the dream that he runs the McDonald's business. But we can still sympathize with Ray at this point. Kroc had traveled the country as a salesman for 20 years. He understood commercialism was here to stay, and many of his arguments with the McDonald's brothers would have improved the business. When Ray meets Harry Sonneborn, he's hitting another low point in the film. Sonneborn's plan was for Ray's company to take control of all the land under the McDonald's franchises, and this is the move that turned McDonald's from a restaurant chain into a real estate empire. The issue is that Ray made the move to real estate without the brothers' consent. His desperation for acclaim and leanings towards disassociation made him overeager and not willing to risk rejection by asking the McDonald brothers for approval. At the same time, his frustration with Ethel and what feels like a lack of support has already driven a wedge between them by the time we meet Joan. Kroc is a romantic in the film, doing business with Joan, checking in on her franchises, and discussing new milkshake recipes before finally making a romantic move. The real Ray Kroc never spoke much publicly about his family life. In fact, he was often criticized for writing a 300-page book without a single mention of his family. His daughter had passed away by this time from complications from diabetes, and after that, Joan was his only family, but perhaps it was omitted because it didn't fit Ray's daydream. Disassociative personalities have a habit of severing ties, and Ray's process of rebranding himself begins with his divorce from his first wife. As the business grows, the character change after Kroc's experience with power and control is off-putting, with Ray Kroc yelling at the brothers, hanging up, and threatening them. And it's meant to be. Kroc earned the reputation of an absolutely brutal businessman. One of the most shocking lines in the film is a real quote from Ray Kroc. If any of my competitors were drowning, I'd stick a hose in their mouth and turn on the water. The final step in severing ties with his previous life is removing the McDonald's brothers from the company. By paying each one off with a million dollar check, he takes full control of the business. In reality, Dick and Mac McDonald never actually complained about the deal they received from Ray. In fact, they were known to happily display the check. But in the film, Ray builds a McDonald's across the street from their original restaurant, forcing it out of business in a final petty move. Kroc himself lived for another 25 years as the founder of McDonald's and husband of Joan Kroc, and his death in 1981 was linked with alcohol abuse. 
Self-medicating through alcohol is a common coping mechanism for people dealing with mental illnesses like maladaptive daydreaming. In the end, the question remains, was Ray Kroc experiencing a psychological disorder throughout much of his life? And if so, did his tendencies towards maladaptive daydreaming ultimately lead him to become the persistent character that usurped a billion dollar business? Want to learn more about business theory and pop culture? Be sure to like and subscribe to get notified of our next segment.